Well, I think we believe that both the motor and the non-motor features of Parkinson's relate to the uh, alpha-synuclein toxicity on nerve cells. And so, um, unlike treatments that are exclusively targeting dopamine or certain neurotransmitters, um, this should have an impact, if it, if it is effective, it should have an impact on all of the features of Parkinson's disease that are related to the damage to nerve cells that alpha-synuclein seems to be able to cause. So I think uh, this is one of the advantages of uh, a treatment that is directed at the general pathogenesis of the disease. We hope it's going to affect all symptoms of the disease. Right now we don't have an ability to diagnose Parkinson's disease before you have the signs and symptoms of Parkinson's disease. We have certain individuals who we know have a very high likelihood of developing the disease if they've inherited a gene, for example, that causes Parkinson's. Some of those genes are very highly likely to be associated with the development of the disease, and other genes uh, have a lower penetrance, and so maybe only a third of patients, for example, that inherit the, uh, the LARC2 mutations may develop the, uh, the, the disease, and other genes are only risk factors for the disease, although they're very common, for example, GBA. So in individuals who have inherited genes, you may consider recruiting them into clinical trials even before they've developed the signs and symptoms of the disease, especially if you have additional markers that maybe they are going to develop the, the disease. Maybe they you have a gene plus a um, an abnormality of the sense of smell, plus maybe a disturbance of sleep, and then you could even do uh, PET scanning and show that they've already developed some changes in their dopamine system. So those features combined may allow us to recruit patients prior to the development of any signs and symptoms. That's still the minority of patients, however. Most patients don't have one of those genes that predisposes so we really need markers that tell us who's going to develop the disease. Until those markers are available, and until the, the disease-modifying therapy is very, very safe, it's not realistic to think that these kinds of treatments like monoclonal antibodies are going to be provided to anyone who doesn't already have the signs and symptoms of the disease. So, and this is a very costly and invasive treatment too. These patients require infusions of the monoclonal antibodies on a regular basis. So that kind of thing is not going to impact on preventing Parkinson's on a, a large scale. This is going to be a treatment that would um, hopefully alter the disease once you've already had the disease set in, in, in course and patients have already developed uh, the features of the illness. Well, uh, the Movement Disorder Society, or the International Parkinson and Movement Disorder Society, the MDS, um, is the leading society in, in the field of Parkinson's and movement disorders. It drives education. Uh, it, uh, um, in the work that it does, also encourages the research. It doesn't. It's not a funding agency for research, but I think the simple fact that it brings people together on an annual basis to um, learn the cutting edge research area, get people talking together. We have task forces, we have a variety of working groups that all are in the process of driving the field and, and doing research. Uh, the impact of this uh, organization on the field is just, uh, it's unimaginable how, how the field would be in the absence of the, the society. And um, the other really important thing that it does is train future leaders for the field. We have a, a leadership program that takes young people and nurtures them, develops their careers, and, and prepares them to be able to lead the field in the future. So uh, I think that this is a fantastic meeting. It's the best meeting in the field. Um, from my perspective, it's the only really good meeting in the field, and it's um, run by a society that knows what it's doing and really looks to the future of trying to help our patients and, and the physicians that are caring for them.